One thing is certain. Pandemics through history were so devastating that millions of people disappeared, wiping out huge percentages of the world's population. The glory of the Roman Empire was a distant memory of the past, when the Byzantine Emperor Justinian came to power. A lot of time has passed since the western part of the empire was under Roman control. Justinian decided that he will be the emperor that will return its glory to Rome, becoming one of the most influential rulers of the Eastern Roman Empire. Justinian was crowned in the year 527 AD. He made a great political move at 533 AD by settling a peace deal with the Persians, which allowed the Byzantine army to make great progress in North Africa and the Italian peninsula by 540. The only enemy Justinian wasn't prepared for was the plague, which appeared in Constantinople in the year 541, spreading towards the rest of the empire two years later. It is widely believed this was a strain of the bubonic plague. A high death percentage led to a huge decrease in workforce, which later impacted the army and economy in the Eastern Roman Empire. Justinian's plague was the first large pandemic of the plague and the first documented case of the bubonic plague documented by the historian Procopius. It is believed the plague first came from China, spreading to India and later appearing in Egypt, from which Procopius claims it came to the empire. Procopius wrote that 5,000 people died each day just in Constantinople, which later increased to 10,000. These numbers were likely exaggerated, but they give us an insight on how the plague was perceived and the horrors that were going on in the streets of Constantinople. Procopius told us how the plague lasted for four months. Those that were healthy stayed at home or mourned the dead. Those that were outside buried the dead. The number of total casualties is unknown, but it is suspected the plague killed 40% of Constantinople's population and one quarter of the Eastern Mediterranean. As the years passed, there was a steady wave of the plague, but the disease was localized and less contagious. Agathius wrote about the second wave of the plague that killed many residents of the capital. Even Justinian was infected, but somehow managed to survive. As we said, Justinian's plague was the first appearance of the first bubonic plague, which flooded the world for 225 years, until its disappearance in 750 AD. Yersinia pestis is thought to be responsible for the pandemic, and the death estimate is between 25 to 100 million people. Some historians believe that was half of the world's population at the time. Some historians believe that was half of the world's population at the time. The disappearance of this plague still remains a mystery. Although some professors say people survived simply because they developed an immunity towards the disease. The Black Death is the deadliest pandemic ever recorded in human history. It caused the death of 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia and North Africa, with its peak in Europe from the year 1347 AD to 1351 AD. The cause was once again the bacteria Yersinia pestis, creating the second pandemic of the bubonic plague 800 years later. The Black Death arrived in Europe in the year 1347 AD, when 12 ships arrived from the Black Sea, docking in Sicily. The people that were gathered there witnessed a horrific sight. Almost all of the sailors were dead. Before this event, Europeans only heard rumors about a plague that paved a path of death into trade routes of the Middle and Far East. During the 1340s, the plague hit China, India, Persia, Syria and Egypt. As Giovanni Bogaccio wrote, it seemed the disease was so potent, it was enough to only touch the clothes of the infected and you will catch the plague yourself. The Black Death was so terrifying it could kill those that were healthy in one night. The plague never ended, only returned after a couple of years. The citizens of Ragusa, or today's Dubrovnik, slowed down the plague by placing sailors into a quarantine until they were completely sure they were healthy. The sailors were held in ships for 30 days, or Trentino. This number was later increased to 40 days, and that is how we got the word quarantine. This was the worst case of the plague in England since the Black Death. 
To London lost around 15% of its population. It is believed that over 100,000 people lost their lives. Rats, attracted by the dirty streets of London, carried fleas that spread the plague. The king tried stopping the disease by leaving the poorest of people in the part of the city with the highest population of rats and infected. Guards stood in front of the homes of the infected, not allowing them to leave and bringing them food. All trade routes with London were closed as well. In the same year the Great Plague of London ended. A great fire surrounded the city, destroying many homes and historical places. Today, this disease isn't as prominent thanks to good hygiene and antibiotics. There was a lot more pandemics through human history, and we can only imagine those that went unrecorded in our distant past. The Great Pox was present in Europe, Asia, and other parts of the world for centuries. It killed 3 out of 10 people that were infected. During the 18th century, this disease killed around 400,000 Europeans each year and decimated the Native American population because they never developed an immunity before their contact with Europeans. It is estimated that this disease was responsible for around 300 to 500,000 deaths in the 20th century. The Great Pox was also found in Egyptian mummies. In the year 1796, Edward Jenner created the first vaccine and in 1980 the disease was rooted out. During the 19th century, cholera killed tens of thousands of the English population. Everyone had their wrong scientific theories about how the disease spread, except one man by the name of John Snow. By doing research, he realized that water was the problem. One street pump in particular. This discovery greatly helped out with the solution of the problem. Today, cholera is rooted out in developed countries, but still resembles a problem for the third world. We are not the only species that can go through a pandemic. One disease is so catastrophic, it is being described as an apocalypse. It's called the citrid fungus and is destroying amphibian populations all over the world. Of the estimated 700 species affected, 90 of them have already gone extinct. In many species, it has a 100% mortality rate. This fungus is transmitted through direct contact or infected water. Microscopic seeds of the fungus, called spores, spread to bodies of water in search of a new host. Once that host is found, it attacks and eats away at the skin. Skin is very important for the amphibians. They use it for respiration and water uptake. Over time, the fungus leaves them unable to breathe. Just imagine something slowly eating your skin, suffocating you. And the only thing that you can do is wait for your own death. If a host travels to a new body of water, it becomes infected. So how can we help? If you ever find yourself in a place with many amphibians, don't move them, don't release them, and don't touch them. Thank you all so much for sticking to the end of this video and for the amazing growth in the last couple of days.